Now we're going to go ahead and move forward in our applications and do things uh, that are a little more complicated. And to be able to solve these problems, you're going to need to use a strategy to be able to go ahead and work out where the max and the mins are. So in this strategy, we're going to do what most students hopefully do, which is read the problem carefully. You want to make sure you understand what is given to you and what is an unknown. In step two, if possible, sketch a diagram. Label the various parts of that diagram. Step three, decide on a variable that must be maximized or minimized. Express that variable as a function of one other variable. Be sure to find the domain of the function. So what this means is sometimes when you write out the thing to be maximized or minimized, there'll actually be two variables in there. In that case, you'll use, need to use some other information in the problem to be able to write it out with just one variable. Step four, find the critical points for the function from step three. And step five, if the domain is a closed interval, evaluate the function at the endpoints and the critical points to see which yields the absolute maximum or minimum. If the domain is an open interval, test the function to determine if an absolute maximum or minimum exists at one of the critical points. You may have to use this first derivative test, the second derivative test, or do some limits to be able to test the function. In our first example, we're going to look at maximizing revenue. If the price charged for a candy bar is P of X cents, then X thousand candy bars will be sold in a certain city where P of X is 100 minus X divided by 10. Find the value of X that leads to maximum revenue. So the first thing we need to remember is that revenue is X times P. And here P of X has been given to us. It's 100 minus X over 10. So I'm going to write out r of x equals x times p of x and then I'm going to go ahead and put this formula for p of x, our demand function, which gives the prices in place of that. So what we end up getting is x times the quantity 100 minus x divided by 10. In our next step we'll go ahead and distribute the x into both of the terms there which gives us 100x minus x squared divided by 10. This is fairly simple to take the derivative of, so we'll use that to find our critical points. So the derivative of 100x is 100. If I think of this minus x squared over 10 as simply being minus 1 tenth x squared, the derivative of the x squared is 2x. 2x times minus 1 tenth gives us minus 2x divided by 10. Since I'm looking for critical points, I'll set that equal to 0 or find where it's undefined. And we don't have to worry about undefined in this problem because this is a polynomial and polynomials are defined everywhere. So I'm going to multiply each piece by 10. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. 10 times 2x over 10 is simply 2x. So that leaves me with 1,000 minus 2x equals 0. If I go ahead and add 2x to both sides, I get 1,000 equals 2x. If I divide both sides by 2, that gives me x equals 500. So now I have my critical point and I need to go ahead and put that on a number line and test that first derivative to see whether I have a maximum or a minimum. I don't want to just assume that it's a maximum here. So here's my number line for the first derivative and I've put my critical point 500 on there where it's equal to 0. Now for this particular problem I've put zero on here because remember X represents candy bars so the very lowest that this could be is zero. And I've put a closed point here. On the other end I've gone infinitely far. It's open. And that's because there's no limit on the number of th candy bars that will be sold. 
So to test, I'm going to pick two values on either side of 500. In my case, I'm going to pick 250 and 600. And I need to put those values into the first derivative and figure out whether I get positive or negative. So let me start with 250. When I put 250 into our derivative, I get 2 times 250 over 10. So that's 500 over 10, which gives me 50. So 100 minus 50 will give me positive. When I put 600 in, 2 times 600 is 1,200. Divided by 10 is 120. And 100 minus 120 is a negative number. So what this tells me is the graph was increasing, reached the critical point, and then decreasing. And that verifies that this must have been a maximum because it changed from increasing to decreasing. I know that this is the only maximum for a couple of reasons. First of all, after the critical point, it keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. I know at zero I don't have anything to worry about because from zero it increased up to the critical point. Another thing that helps me to verify this is the fact that I recognize that r of x is a parabola that's concave down because of the negative x squared here. If I look at the second derivative, the second derivative here would just be minus 2 tenths. It's negative, so that tells me it's concave down. Some of you might prefer to look at the fact that it's concave down at the critical point to reach the conclusion that it's a maximum. Others of you may prefer to use the first derivative test. In most cases, you just need to use one of these two. So since we now know that the graph changed from increasing to decreasing at the critical point, and that it was concave down at the critical point, we now know that 500, x equals 500, is the relative maximum. In this case, remember that it was in thousands of candy bars, so this maximum actually occurs at 500,000.